Okay, now that we've done TPAC, let's go take a look at our wonderful Tim. Here we are. So what is Tim? Tim was developed by the FCTI, which is basically the Florida Center for Integration or Instructional Technology, excuse me. Um, kind of a outgrowth of a FSU, Florida State. So, excuse me, not FSU, it's uh, South Florida. And they um, borrow heavily from the Lodi. Boy, it's a lot of acronyms I'm throwing at you, aren't I? They borrow heavily from the Lodi, which is Levels of Technology Integration. I'll talk about that in just a second. <clears throat> they borrow heavily from them. And what they've done is they've put together a very nice way of looking at a lesson, a classroom, um, and determining what kinds of things are going on when technology is involved. So what they were trying to do was to develop a common language for technology information and professional development. Lodi, Levels of Technology Integration, was originally developed out of Tennessee as a package for schools to sell for school teachers to self-report their levels of technology fluency. Uh, we used uh, Lodi a lot back in the day, um, and the uh, archdiocese used used it a lot. It's a not supposed to be an evaluative tool. It is supposed to be an informational tool. And so what happens is teachers go in and they take the Lodi self-assessment and then that information is reported back out to the principal, but no one's name is attached to it. And so what the principal sees in the report is 50% of his teachers uh, feel that they are proficient with, say, Microsoft Word, or 50% say they are proficient with creating presentations. You get the idea. Based upon that kind of feedback, then professional development can be developed. So they took the Lodi levels of technology integration, they took those terms and they made them these across the top here. So you have your entry level, your adoption level, your adaption level, your infusion level, and your transformation level. That is straight out of the Lodi playbook. Then what they went on to do is they added these learning environments. In other words, what are we seeing when we're watching? Um, are we seeing an active learning? Are they actively engaged in using their technology? We see a collaborative learning environment where students use technology to collaborate with others other than working individually. Constructivist, are we looking at learning through the lens of applying what we have learned, our new knowledge to our old knowledge to come up with uh, new ideas? Authentic learning, are we taking learning and we're applying it directly? to a real world situation. You will hear all of this echoing all through this course, by the way. Uh, when we get to understanding by design, uh, an awful lot of this comes back through the uh, facets of understanding. And of course, one of their main mantras is that uh, real learning only occurs when students demonstrate their understanding of learning and then apply it. And then finally, there's goal-directed learning, um, where kids are basically using technology in ways uh, that they're developing the whole shooting match themselves. Now, let me go back and let's look at the levels from the Lodi form, because this is kind of, when you go to do this form, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be deciding, well, what am I looking at? Now, could there be more than one learning activity going on? One would hope so. <laughs> but we both know, we all know that maybe that is not the case. And so what we would see would be 
we might see an active learning going on. And then what we would do is we'd look across the matrix and look at these different levels and realize that what we're seeing is technology is only being used at the active level in the entry. And what does it mean? So at the entry level, typically the teacher uses the technology to deliver the content. The kids are basically just sitting there absorbing it all. Let me pop out of here. And I want to show you. Um, so that's what I was just doing is right here. But let me take you to the tool. So this is the Tim interactive tool. I don't know if it's easier for you to see this or not, but I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. What's nice about this interactive tool is if you click on each one of these boxes, um, it will give you a deeper definition. And what you can do then is it will also show you, dun, 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 dun. it'll show you what it looks like. So in other words, entry level, characteristics for active learning. Here's some videos. Here's collaboration. So when you get ready to go and do, let me keep going. I did that too fast. Here's constructivist learning. Here is authentic learning. And here's goal-directed learning. So you can look at these so that you have an idea of when you go then to do the assignment where you go in and look at the various uh, tools, or excuse me, the various videos that I have, and I'll show you where all that lives. Uh, you can then have a way of understanding, so this is what it should look like by using this particular tool right here. Let me go back. An entry. In the entry, the teacher is basically driving everything. It's your classic stand and deliver. It's classic, you know, the teacher is totally in control of the classroom. Uh, as far as the technology goes. They're up there tapping away on their computer. They're running a PowerPoint. They're playing YouTube videos. They might even have a smart board in the room. They're walking up to it and tapping on it. But the kids are basically just passive receivers. They don't really get anything out of it. The adoption level, the technology or tools are used in more conventional ways and in procedural ways. Now, this is a classic definition for the Google Classroom in my little brain. If you think about what's going on in the use of the Google Classroom, teachers are making the decisions of what tools that the kids are going to use. In other words, are you going to be using Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Forms? And the kids then are involved with the use of that technology at a very basic level. In other words, they're just doing... The same kind of stuff they would do on paper, pencil, but now they're using the Google Classroom structure to do it in. Adaptation. At the adaptation level, the teacher still facilitates the technology use, but students are able to use the tools independently. Students also begin to explore different ways to use the technology they know how to use. This is kind of what we hope we would see. Again, let's go back and use the Google Classroom as, as our analogy here. A teacher would say, I want you to build a 10-slide presentation about what we have been learning about biomes um, on the planet Earth. And each kid then would go in, they would develop their own understanding through the use of the Google Slide. But what we saw there was the teacher is identifying the technology that would the students would use. Now, what the kids might do is they might look in the Google Slide setup and realize that it has the ability to embed YouTube videos, very simply. They might look at it and see what other features that it has available to them. Adaption, adaptation, I mean. Infusion, now we're starting to really get into something interesting. So basically in infusion, the teacher delivers the content 
and then she basically gives the kids the ability to decide what tools they want to use to do their demonstrations. Now, if you took the 585 class from me, you know that Michael Fullen, Dr. Michael Fullen, refers to this in his Stratosphere book as the skinny. In other words, kids know the tools well enough that basically the teacher just says, I'd like you to do a demonstration of your understanding about um, the various biomes that we see on planet Earth. You decide how you want to make that presentation of understanding. That's infusion. And that's kind of what we hope to see. We always want to see that the kids have a comfort level that they can do this. Now, let me give you another example. And this was real. This was a real example. I went and watched a class out at Greenwood Elementary. Great teacher, Christina Mudd. And what she did, when she was doing Native American studies, that classic uh, fifth grade uh, social studies stuff. And she wanted her kids to decide on a area of Native Americans, woodlands, Great Plains, southeastern, you get the idea, southwestern and northwestern. They then owned the teaching of that. And their final product, not, not only were they doing that, their final product was they had to make a PSA about the lives of the various Native Americans in the United States. Great stuff. Really good stuff. And one of the things that she did is she taught just enough. She taught just enough. In other words, they knew how to use the tools. Every kid had a Chromebook. And so she had taught them all the different tools that were available within the Chromebook obviously Google stuff. And what happened was something really cool. They then found things within the environment of their tool set and their Chromebooks. One of the things they found was Wii videos and the ability for the Chromebook to take movies, make movies. They also knew from other things they've done in the class that she had a green screen set up. They started taking all those disparate pieces and putting them together. And what of course happened was exactly what you would expect in the transformational is that students are independent when they're using the technology and they use the tools to further extend the learning experience. And the technology is focused at very high levels of learning. Understanding what would we put in the green screen background. You know what green screens are, of course. Green screens is where you stand in front of a, it doesn't have to be green, but green seems to be the best color because our bodies, our skin colors are never green, unless you're really sick. Um, and then you can replace that green color behind you with whatever you want. It could be a picture, it could be a movie, whatever. So they knew that. And what they realized was that could be a very powerful way for them to take you on a virtual journey onto the various reservations where the Native Americans live today, that they then could make an appeal for this is how people live, is this how you'd want to live, and so on and so on. It was really, really a cool, cool experience. Now let me pop over and let's go down the other side just so we can say we've done it all. So the active is students are engaged using technology as a tool rather than passively receiving information from the technology. And as you can see in the entry level, no, they don't. They just receive it passively. In the, let me get this out of the way. In the adoption level, it's pretty much like I described it. You're, you're telling kids, uh, go and use your Google Slides, et cetera, et cetera. In the adaptation, kids are given choices and they're allowed to explore. Excuse me while I close out those things. Students are allowed to explore and to make choices. In the infusion, 
at the active level, students are choosing tools in regular self-directed use. And then at the transformational, extensive and unconventional use of tools. Pretty standard. This is kind of what I was just describing as I went across the top. But let me drop down. Let's start looking at other things. So, and this is, I think we need to really start looking at collaborative because more and more and more, what we're seeing, our teachers are beginning to understand how you use collaborative tools in the Google Suite. And because of that, we're seeing that collaborative work, especially in schools that have either one-to-ones or one-to-many, uh, usually it's Chromebooks, but in some places you're seeing it with uh, iPads, you're seeing more of this collaborative ability because it's easy to do within the Google. It's very easy to do. So at the entry level, of course, <laughs> we're right back to, well, kids are just using it on their own, even though they might be in a collaborative group. In other words, here's three kids sitting over here, but they're all working on their laptops all by themselves. And then in, in the adoption level, we, again, we see that they're using them within the group, but they're using them in co conventional ways. And then we keep going across, and as you can see, now we get over here to transformational, and this really changes. Collaboration with peers, outside experts, and others in ways that may not be possible without the technology. Notice that jump. That's a huge jump. Now, I kind of think that we kind of lost um, our way here in making this jump. Because see, look now here under adaptation, they're saying collaborative use of the tools, some student choice and exploration. So the assumption here is, also here under adoption, is that now we are using the tool collaboratively. Me, Susie, Sally, Joe, we've all been assigned to come up with a way to explain to the rest of the class something. We chosen uh, Google Slides, and then we've gone in and we put the four of us into the Google Slides to say that all four of us could work on it at the same time which you can do. You can work on it at the same time, which is really interesting to watch in a classroom. We draw here to the constructivist. They say constructive. I say constructivist, you know, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Um, but it's, it's the same idea. The students use technology tools to, con to connect new information to their prior knowledge. This is classic constructivism. Um, and, you know, I think constructivism, we, we need to get over it. People are talking about constructivist theory. Constructivist theory, it's reality. It's just what we do. Yeah, that's just my personal take. Again, let's look what we got. Constructivism with in the entry level is just giving the kids the stuff. You know, and then if you think about it, this might be the stuff that you do make the connection back. So it's not like you're not doing a good job of doing constructivist teaching here. You're just basically saying, okay, remember yesterday we talked about this. And then last week we talked about this. Now this is how the two went together. Today we're gonna start seeing this new thing and how it fits with those other two things. That's still good constructivist teaching, but it fits right here in the entry level when it comes to technology use. Then here, under building knowledge, the adoption, what we see here is we're still doing guided conventional use for building knowledge. In other words, okay, now that I've taught you this, this, and this, let's see how well you can put it all together. Notice there's no tools here, no technology tools mentioned. So then under independent use for building technology, this would be the adaptation, you're giving kids the choice of how they want to show their new knowledge. In other words, constructing the new knowledge, what would it look like? And then when we move up here to infusion, again, choice and regular use. Again, I'll use a uh, full -inch term the skinny, uh, to demonstrate that, yeah, I know how to use this tool. 
So really, that kind of gets set aside. That's a very TPAC notion as well. We're just setting that aside because I don't have to waste a lot of time here with, excuse me, how do I put that graphic into a, a Google Slides? I don't do that in an infusion level. The kids are just taking it and doing it. And then the focus of what they're doing is, is they're saying, okay, so this is my new knowledge. This is what I now know. And now I'm going to show you how I know that through the use of these technology tools that I have regularly at my fingertips. And then, of course, under transformation, you do the extensive and unconventional use of technology tools <laughs> to build knowledge. That one, you know, you really have, I, I saw something very similar to this. I saw a classroom, high school physics classroom, where the teacher basically gave the kids a box of junk. Now, it wasn't really junk junk, but it was, you know, just all kinds of different pieces, parts. And then they were given a challenge. And so what they had to do was they had to come up with a device that would meet the challenge. And they had all kinds of other, they had, you know, Chromebooks, uh, everything was available to them. So they could go back and revisit their prior learnings. Now this was all within the content of Newton's laws. So you kind of see how it all kind of came out. So they had studied Newton's laws, uh, motion, and then they had gone in and had done some experiments with it, using technology to do demonstrations of their understanding of the experiments. Um, this infusion level was pretty obvious. The transformational was when they had to take the box of junk and come up with their own way of meeting the challenge. Uh, basically, the challenge was they had to come up with a way to get a car. It didn't have to be a car. It just had to be a wheeled vehicle up a very steep, rocky uh, paper mache mountain. That was cool. Authentic. So in this one, it really jumps out at you. The entry level, the technology is not related to the world outside the instructional setting. You know, it just, uh, we see this all the time uh, with people think that they're using technology when they give drill and skill kind of worksheets that are on the computer. When, and, and this one is so, it, it's so, badly done because you, you see it all the time and people think they're really using technology and when you say that's an entry level one they just kind of get really well they just get upset <laughs> when we do adoptive and so now we're using stuff in a meaningful way okay so this is where you would see technology being used um, in trigonometry geometry. This is where you would see technology being used uh, to look at uh, data in a stats class, or actually it doesn't have to be a stats class. I think data instruction statistics ought to be something we ought to be doing all the way down into third grade. But those activities have meaningful context but may not be context that the student is connected to. Then we get over here to adoption. <clears throat> they use the activities connected to students' lives. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the activities are connected to students' lives. There's some student choice and exploration. The adaptation, again, tools are readily available to be used in meaningful activities. And then transformational, give an example of transformational here. Uh, eighth grade, algebra class. The uh, setting was a middle school, obviously. The teacher was using um, the ability of kids 
to develop quadratics. They'd learned quadratics. They knew the formula. They could solve quadratic formula problems. Here was what she challenged them with. She said the school was looking into putting a fountain in front of the school to celebrate the school. Uh, if I told you the name of the school, you'd smile and say, yeah, I could see that. And they were challenged by their teacher to develop the fountain. In other words, what's going to look like, what would its dimensions be, how high would the water go, et cetera, et cetera. That's a direct application, if you think about it, of quadratics, being able to discover the area under a curve. Um, and that one, that was a great example. And this was a few years ago. And so the level of technology use in the classroom was all kinds of tools that were not what we would think of today as being very technologically advanced. But back then, you know, we're talking about handheld calculators. We're talking about they used the computers in the classroom, strangely enough, to use a program that that's how I'll, why I was involved with it called Knowledge Forum which was something that we now take for granted, but back then was startling in its use. Um, we did collaborative learning. In other words, kids could go in and see what each other had been writing about, and they could then comment on it and so on. Something you take for granted today. Back then, big time. So what we did is kids would basically go in, work together in groups, deciding on what models would work, what didn't work, and then they would go in and present a group note that everybody in the class then could see, and there would be this wonderful synergy of what people's thoughts were. Really good example of authentic. Now, when you look at goal-directed, you're basically are using the tool in a way that is totally driven by the student. So the student uses the technology tools to set the goals, plan activities, monitor progress, and evaluate results rather than simply completing assignments without reflection. This, to me, first of all, it screams Montessori at me. Um, and others, you know, Waldorf. But when you look at this, you know, you look at the entry level, and again, it's, this one's kind of a stretch, if you ask me, where they're saying directions given step-by-step, -step, task monitoring. Well, that's not even closer resembling goal-directed. And then you have a conventional and procedural use of tools to plan or monitor. So the kid goes in and uses a Google Docs to kind of lay out what they're going to do for the week to meet their goals for their learning. Um, then you've got more purposeful use, flexible and seamless use. The skinny... <laughs> And then extensive and high order use of tools to plan and monitor. That's it. That is the Tim. Um, what I gave you, like I said, this, this one is a very nice uh, layout that they put out here because it's interactive. You can click on it. It goes in and gives you very clear uh, ideas about where things fit. Uh, it even gives you a location up here. So when you get ready to go do your own, you'll know that if you see in a video things that land in goal-directed learning at this level, then uh, this is what we ought to be seeing. And then here's videos. They even give you an even better idea of what it might look like. Okay? This is good stuff here. This is really well done by the good folks. Um down at the Florida Center for Technology, Instructional Technology. I always get that mixed up. I want to call it integration, but it's really instructional technology. Okay, so that's the interactive tool that you can use. Um, up here, the intro to Tim is really just the basic website where all this other stuff that I just threw at you came from. And then here is the PDF that uh, is this. In other words, it's what's here on the page. All right. So let's go look at 
the assignment for both of these for the TPAC and the TIM. And then I'll show you where things live. So up to the top level here. Let me turn this off because everything's showing up that I have in here that you don't need to see for right now. So if we look down here, what it says is choose a video lesson from the TPAC Tim CEHD wiki, which is located at a PB Works wiki. Embed into the Blackboard assignment and complete the TPAC observation instrument. You're going to do the same thing for the TIM, and you're going to then complete the technology integration matrix. Now, both of these are located on one document, and all you're going to do is you're going to take the linked address of the video. So you're going to have to go all the way into the video. I'll show you in a minute here what I mean. Now, build uh, an infographic using VisMe that depicts the weaving together of TPAC and TIM. The things that make the sorry there's noise happening and I'm gonna have to give it a second here I'll just come up and talk closer to the mic we're gonna use the VisMe to build a weaving together a TPAC and Tim to form a picture of their interconnections all right so let's go in and look at it in the assignments okay so when I go here there is the one document right here. And pull it down. Open it up. So what you're doing is you're going to go in and find your TPAC video. And you're going to put it here. In other words, the link. And then you're going to go through and you're going to score it by saying, okay, so this is where I see it under the various goals. And then you're going to bold that. So that's how I scored it there. I gave it a four. Matching technology and instructional strategies. Technology use supports instructional strategies. Maybe they didn't really do a great job of that. So I'm going to give it just a four, a three, and so on. Okay. Down here in the TPAC, in the TIM, I mean, you're doing the exact same thing. Now, what will be different about this is that in the TIM, you might have an indicator that would represent um, an active learning situation as well as a co collaborative learning situation. So you might have multiple scorings going on here. In other words, at this level, it's all entry. Kids are just being, you know, drill and practice and so on. Um, at a collaborative level, if they were doing it, you know, they're just working together, but they're working alone within that being together. But it doesn't have to be that, okay? If you don't see any more than just one thing, in other words, you see active learning going on, you see collaboration going on, you see constructivist going on, authentic going on, goal-directed going on. If you just see that one way of instruction happening, fine, just score it that way. If you see more than one, you, you can go through and you can have more than one line here. Now, the question is always asked, the question is always asked, am I looking for, and let me show you where it lives. Sorry about that, I'll fix that so it will go up. So you're looking for the various videos that are located in this wiki right here, technology in the classroom videos. You click on that, and here they are. Now, they're all over the map, folks. They are all over the map. So the question that gets asked to me is, 
am I looking for one that's the best example? In other words, it would be all it would be all transformations if I were looking at it through the lens of the Tim. Or it's all fours if I were looking at it through the lens of the TPAC. No, you don't have to do that. If you want to find a negative, in other words, this is god awful. <laughs> and this is why. Then you feel free to do that. Okay? You do not have to find the greatest example here. Because I'll tell you, there are no great examples here. There's a couple that come close. Now, there's some in here that are really bad. Um, and I'll let you see if you can find them. So you can go either way with the whole thing. Now, to do it, what you're going to do. Um, so here's Sarah. And we can watch Sarah either here. Or we can go ahead, and you know how this works. We can follow Sarah all the way into YouTube and watch her. All right, good morning, guys. Today, we are starting something new. This is the first time that I've seen you in here since before spring break. So hopefully... Okay, so I'm going to stop her right there. And I'm going up here, and I'm going to click on the... Earl, the link to this. And then what I would do is I would then go into my document. And go ahead and paste in the YouTube that I was wanting to use. Now, if you've got, um, you know, the cool newest word, you can put it in as a... Um, as a YouTube video, it'll come in that way. Don't have to. Just put the link in. And then I see this. I click on it. I know what they are. So I just have to see it once. And then I can look down here and see how you scored it. Make sense? Let me quit out of here. All right. So that is how we're doing the TPAC and the TIM lessons. And as I said, I'll fix this link so that when you click on it, it goes straight into the, the PB Works. Building an infographic, we're going to be using a new tool. Uh, in the past, we used something called uh, Pick the Chart. The VisMe, I kind of like it a little bit better, frankly. And the reason why I like it is, first of all, you can get a free account. It's you you make. It doesn't have a time limit. It just has the amount limit. So you can only make five. So you can make five. Uh, if you want to use mine, sure, go right ahead. It's sbswan02 at louisville.edu, password ULIT241. Don't have to. You can make your own account. This is a really nice tool uh, because <laughs> one of the things that I really like about it is when you go to create, which you click on right up here in the upper left, here's the infographics, okay? So that's what we're making, is we're gonna make an infographics. What I want to do is Steve wants me to do comparison. So I'm gonna just type in comparison and let it go out there and find me examples of infographics that have already been made that do comparisons. And I can look at them and I can go, okay, so this, excuse me, this is kind of like what I could see. Because I could go in here and I could put TPAC and Tim. Are we looking for the same thing? Something like that. And then I could go into these various overlapping circles here and I could show you where the different parts of the TPAC and the TIM are very similar to each other. Kind of cool, huh? So I drop in, I can hit the edit button. And at this point, now you're, you're into if you've ever done anything with, uh, by the way, that's popping up and trying to help me. Isn't that nice? If you've ever done any work with PowerPoint, you're, you're, you're home free. 
So I can just click on the boxes where the, the writing is. And I can do a double click. Simple as that. I can drop down here to my shapes and all that. I can click on the inside of that. Now this is where you're gonna start thinking. So if I were to put something in here that was a TPEC idea, how does it then relate to maybe something that was a, a Tim idea and then over here, so on and so on. You see, it, it's, it's really simple to work with. Very, very, very easy to work with. You get done with that. You get it the way you want it to look. Make sure, make sure you put a title on it. Okay. If you don't do that, it'll go away. Now I can go ahead and I can share it. I can do publish to the web, which is the easiest way to do it. And now I'm going to publish it to the web. There's my link. And I can now copy that URL and put it in to my Word doc that Stephen put in here. You know what? I might go back in here and clean this up a little bit. I don't like the way it looks. It's a little janky looking. So I'll, I'll go in and try to clean that up for you. Okay. Now, where would I put it? Oh, I'm sorry. I would put it just down here at the bottom. As I said, I'll clean this up so the language is a lot more obvious. And then I would just basically just do a paste and there I am. So there's my, there's my visme for this. And then I would upload this back into the assignment in Blackboard. Okay. So we have now done, um, TPAC and Tim. We are finished with this module. Now, I want you to understand something that uh, I broke these two apart, mainly because um, obviously on Tuesday of class at 4.30 today, I'm, will, I'm there. So on the 27th. I'll be there on September 3rd, next Tuesday, I won't be, but I've already got that video made. That's the one I'm doing right now. That's the Tim. So you'll have everything you need to complete th this module. And as I said, these, I'll clean this up right here where I forgot to put in this particular piece. As always, if you need help, if you need clarification, uh, don't hesitate to give me, drop me an email. Better yet, and you know this, if you 502-457-2937 and text me with your questions, your concerns, you'll get an immediate response. Even though I'll be gone uh, from tomorrow until next Wednesday, I have my phone with me at all times, and of course I have my technology with me at all times. And so I can get on and look at stuff and give you an answer. 